orthodox 18th century notions of the afterlife were rather simplistic. On the day of judgment, the graves open, and each person is resurrected with a physical body to face a celestial bureaucracy. Swedenborg refuted these notions in several books. This greatly upset traditionalists, such as his friend, Reverend Ferelius. You are a learned man, sir. Versed in scriptures, surely you can understand, despite whatever things your spirits tell you. It is like our courts of law. On the day of judgment, the pious are rewarded. The wicked are punished. Now, each of us is his own judge. For heaven and hell are also within us. We are each living eternity now. Swedenborg wrote that we experience heaven and hell on earth, and that the worlds beyond the grave are extensions of the psychological realities of daily life. Death is not an extinction, but a continuation of life, merely a transition from one state to another. In several visions, Swedenborg experienced the process of dying and saw others enter the afterlife. He said that immediately following death, there's a period of self-discovery. The social masks worn on earth dissolve away and the true self is revealed. Each person then shapes his own eternity to correspond with his real inner nature. Some become irrational driven by fear and greed. They are in a state Swedenborg called hell. Hell is a psychological condition which corresponds to the suffering we experience on Earth when we allow ourselves to be driven by the blind greed of our own egos. There are no devils here to inflict punishments, since in the state of hell, each person acts out his own malice by tormenting others. Really, sir? No devil? But, your lordship, you mean to say there aren't no devil? No devils. No demons. Such is the equilibrium of everything in the other life, that one brings punishment and torment unto himself. After death, others find within themselves a psychological state Swedenborg called heaven. It is a joyous condition, a state of expanded awareness, of perceiving more and more of the grand plan of creation. The heaven which Swedenborg experienced corresponds to deeds, not creeds. So persons of many races and religions form the societies of heaven, which Swedenborg often called the Church of the Lord. My friend, how can your so-called Church of the Lord include heathens and idolaters? Surely the Lord will cast them into the pit of hell. The Church of the Lord consists of all those who have lived in the good of charity according to their own belief. The Church of the Lord is universal. Good day, my friend. As Swedenborg approached the end of his life, his writings continued to be unacceptable to the officialdom of the Church of Sweden. This posed a problem for Reverend Ferelius, who, in the winter of 1772, was coming to visit Swedenborg for the last time. You have been ill, my friend. Mm. Have you considered that Perhaps you might soon die. 
Yes. Soon it will be my time to die. Are you willing to receive the Lord's Supper? With thankfulness. Have you read my views on the true meaning of communion? No, I'm sorry. I cannot say that I have. Do you acknowledge yourself to be a sinner? Certainly, as long as I have to carry around this sinful body. My friend, quite a number of people think that your sole purpose in promulgating this new theological system has been to make a name for yourself. If such be the case, you ought now to do the world and yourself a justice to retract it, either in whole or in part, especially if you cannot expect to derive any additional advantage in this world, which you will soon be leaving. When you enter eternity, you will see everything. And then you and I shall have much to talk about. Before their parting, Swedenborg presented Reverend Ferelius with one of the last copies of his book, Heavenly Secrets. But Swedenborg was to leave another minister a somewhat more unusual token of his abilities. Reading this, I felt my heart strangely warmed. The England in which Swedenborg spent his last months witnessed the growth of several new Protestant sects. One of these was Methodism. Its founder was John Wesley. That he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Every man and... A letter for you, sir. This is highly peculiar. It was only days ago. A most curious letter was delivered to me. I remember it exactly. It said, Sir, I have been informed in the world of spirits that you have a strong desire to converse with me. I shall be happy to see you. If you will favor me with a visit, I am, sir, your humble servant, Emanuel Swedenborg. I felt exceedingly astonished, for I had been strongly impressed with a desire to see and converse with this gentleman. I sent a reply at once, stating I am at present closely occupied in preparing for a six-month journey but will do the pleasure of waiting upon Mr. Swedenborg soon after my return to London. And now, this. Sir, I am sorry to reply that your proposed visit will be too late, as next month, on March 29th, 1772, I shall enter the world of spirits never more to return. Your humble servant, Emanuel Swedenborg. What time is it? It's five o'clock, your lordship. That is good. I thank you. God bless you. ago he told me your reverence he said he said he was to die on the 29th of March at five o'clock and he was as pleased as if he was going to have a holiday and go to some merrymaking death is not an extinction but a continuation of life Merely a transition from one state to another. When you enter eternity, you will see everything. And then you and I shall have much to talk about.
Reverend Ferelius conducted Swedenborg's funeral in London on April 5th, 1772, his last official act before returning to Sweden. In 1908, Swedenborg's remains were transferred to a place of honor in Sweden's Uppsala Cathedral. His insights remain in the teachings of the Church of the New Jerusalem and have inspired many remarkable people. John Chapman, an American folk hero who dedicated his life to living in harmony with nature. He is better known as Johnny Appleseed because he planted apple orchards across the American frontier. But he also planted spiritual seeds, handing out pages from Swedenborg's books, which he called Good News Right Fresh from Heaven. Johnny Appleseed, the first American missionary of Swedenborg's teachings. Blind, deaf, and mute since childhood, Helen Keller grew up to be an inspiration for people around the world. In her book, My Religion, she writes of Swedenborg. His truths have been to my faculties what light, color, and music are to the eye and ear. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I can see. And there was Greta Askbom, the daughter of one of his neighbors in Sweden. Greta had heard many stories of Swedenborg's communications with angels. She frequently implored him to show her an angel. At last, one day, he consented. Swedenborg's lesson to her was the simplest and perhaps most eloquent statement of his faith in the spiritual universes within each of us. Greta, this is the day you've been looking forward to so long. Sit down. One hand over this eye, and the other hand over this eye. That's it. Now wait. All right, take your hands down now. Now open your eyes. Now, at last, you're going to see an angel. The nonprofit Swedenborg Foundation, with offices in New York City, is dedicated to publishing works by and about Emanuel Swedenborg. For further information and a catalog of available titles, please write to the Swedenborg Foundation. <laughs>